Hello and welcome to our video on fossils. In this video we'll describe the different types of fossils, we'll explain how the principles of fossil succession and the theory of evolution help scientists interpret the fossil record, and finally we'll describe how geologists use fossils to correlate rock layers. Okay, so here you can see a list of the six major types of fossils. The first one are these petrified fossils, and this is where we have mineral-rich water soaked into the cracks and pores, and these minerals will precipitate out and form a fossil. And a really good example of this would be like petrified wood, where we have a wood sample where we have water flowing through it. And as the water flows through it, the water might, but it'll leave minerals behind. So it kind of turns to stone, and that's what that petrified means. The next type is a mold. And a mold is if we have a hard part, like a bone or a shell, that falls into sediment. Then what will happen is, is that rock will form, the shell will dissolve away, and you're left with a hole in that set in that rock and that's what a mold is sometimes when we have a mold we'll have minerals kind of come through and they fill that mold and then we'll have a different type of min a fossil called a cast now if we have something that was living and we apply a lot of pressure that pressure can squeeze out everything else and it can leave behind this carbon film and that's what we call a carbon film and normally these are going to be plants and it's just going to be like the image of the plant pressed onto another rock or something of that nature. We can have preserved remains, and that's if we have a frozen organism like a mammoth that's been trapped in the ice, or we can have an insect that's trapped in amber like we saw in Jurassic Park. So this is where we have one that's trapped in something else and it gets preserved that way. And then finally we have trace fossils. And trace fossils are indirect evidence, so it's a trace the animal left behind. So things like a burrow for a worm or something that kind of went its way through the sediment and left that hole, that would be a trace fossil. The same could be said for footprints and then for coprolites, which is going to be fossilized dung. And these can give us clues as to how the animals lived, but it doesn't really tell us about the animal other than just providing a little bit of like trace evidence, hence they're called trace fossils. Now fossils provide good evidence for the history of life. And there's two different things in here that we have to talk about that allow us to use this. The first is the theory of evolution. And the theory of evolution says that organisms change over time. So if they change over time, what fossils do is they give us a clue as to how they've changed or what they've evolved from. The other thing is fossil succession, and that means that we have different fossil organisms at different periods of time, and they don't live across all of them. So we can see how we have a fossil that's changed over time, and that'll show us the evolution, but that's because we have fossil succession. Okay, because we can use fossils, and these fossils have had this successional pattern, we can use them to help us age rocks in different locations or at different layers in the same location. By looking at this unit A rocks, what we're able to see is certain animals and certain plants were there and we see fossil remains of them. We can do the same at a different layer and what it gives us is the ability to put a relative age on them. If we see a trilobite fossil here, we know that they went extinct so we can kind of get a rough age of when rock B was. We could do the same with C when we're seeing the advent of like this maple leaf. We know when that maple tree started to show around and it gives us a relative age as well. Okay, so that's it for our video. As always, good luck on the lessons and the quizzes and we'll see you in the next video.